This is the practice final test for PowerPoint. Uh, we're going to start at the beginning on number one. It says for all slides change the theme to ION. Uh, themes are on the design tab here. And I think ION is the green one. And there it pops up. So go ahead and click on that. All the slides should change that green with the little red tab up here on the top. Um, insert a title slide at the top of your document. So click above slide number one. You might expect this to be on the Insert tab, but it's on the Home tab. And the type I want is a title slide like this. And uh, for the title, I want Helan Construction Project. So I got my caps lock on. And then for the subtitle, just put your name. And add a footer to all slides except the title slide. Footer is the same as it is on Word, which is on the Insert tab. Go to Header and Footer. And I want slide numbers, but not on the title slide. And I want it on all of the slides, except the title slide. And add my name to the author notes. The notes are down here. Just click down there and type your name. And we're done with slide number one. Slide number two, we want to change it to a two content. So if you want to change the layout, go to layout here and uh, select the format or the layout that you want. And then I want to search for some clip art. They don't even call it clip art anymore. They call it online pictures. So click on online pictures here. And we're looking for construction. So type construction and hit enter. And we'll get some hits. And we're going to pick this one and click on insert and it'll put it in for us. And it shrinks it down and drops it a little below center here. I'm not sure why it did that, but I think it looks funny this way. It doesn't say this in the instructions, but I'm going to do some alignment here. I'm going to align that middle. And then to make things kind of even on both sides here, I'm going to take this text over here and I'm going to align it to the middle of the slide as well. So now they're side by side. And that takes care of slide number two. Now let's go to slide number three. And I want to take the even numbered lines here and indent them one level. Just put a tab, hit the tab key in front. Uh, an alternative would be to go to the home tab here and click on the increase list level. And so I'm going to do that on these last two. But just going to be in the line hitting tab will do the same thing as well. Um, when I indent, the text gets a little bit smaller, the bullet gets a little bit smaller. There's not a whole lot of difference here, but uh, it is. If you look carefully, you can see the bullet is smaller and the text is smaller. And then I want to take all of this stuff here and I want to apply an animation to it. And the one I want is the one called Bounce, which is right here. If I click on that, we'll get a live preview of what it's going to look like. Then I want to go to slide number four, and I want to add some smart art. That's on the insert tab, and smart art. And I want a process, and I want that up arrow. So look through here for something that points up, and that's our up arrow. And I don't want to type all that stuff from slide three in. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to delete this stuff on the left. Go back to slide three, and I'm going to select all of this stuff here and do a control C. And then I'm going to go back over here and I lost my box on the side here, and do a control V and check it out. It uh, puts it in exactly the way I wanted to. I didn't have to type anything myself at all. Um, and then what I want to do is I want to set the colors to accent one. So let's go to our design tab here. Colors, accent one, um, colored fill, looks like that is the depart or the default already and I want it to be 3D brick so let's go up here to our styles and click on the down arrow and 3D ones are down here and the name pops up and there's the brick scene okay now I've got a little bit of a problem here with the light colored text here on and yeah, it does some funny stuff for you here. Uh, I've got the light colored text on kind of a light background here and it's kind of hard to read. So what I'm going to do is I want to move this text down. Um, but I think I probably should have done that before I made it 3D. But there's another way that I can do this as well. 
Uh, if I go to group here and choose ungroup, and I don't think that worked. Let me click on this again. Maybe I didn't have the right thing selected. Let's do try ungroup again. There we go. And now it took all the components of my smart art here. And I just didn't want to do that. Let's do control Z. I just want to select one item here. I had all of them selected. So I want to shrink that up a little bit so that I have a little bit of room to got the wrong thing. Do a control Z again. Get the border of this, get your forehead arrow, and drag it down so it's all on the green background. Then I can go over here, shrink this up as well, and click and drag down. Go over here, shrink this up a little bit. This doesn't need to move too far if it needs to move at all, and this one looks fine. Okay. So um, now that looks a lot better. It didn't say any instructions to do that, but uh, it does look better if we do that. Now let's go to slide number five. And I want to center all of the text in the table, both vertically and horizontally. So let's select everything in here. And let's go to our design layout tab, rather. And I want uh, centered horizontally and vertically. Then I want to apply a table style called medium style to accent five. So my table styles are here. It's under medium. Accent 2 is probably the second row here, um, or style 2, and then accent 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, medium style 2, accent 5, there we go. And then apply the art deco cell bevel effect, so let's, uh, I think I've got the whole thing still selected, so I'm going to go here and go to cell bevel, and I think art deco might be the last one here, and it is, and so that gives me kind of a 3D effect for my table cells. And then I want to go to slide number six. And I want to use the data on this slide to create a chart, clustered column chart. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this um, text from the table here. And so I'm going to do control C after I select it. And then I'm going to uh, delete this. And what I want to do is insert a chart. And so my chart button is right here. And clustered column is one I want. I'm going to click on OK. And it should pull up an Excel spreadsheet for me to work with. And I'm going to try to paste it, do a Control V right here. And I, why is it doing all of that? Oh, I think I had white text, didn't I? So I am going to, uh, let me see if I can go, I don't know if this stuff will apply or not. Uh, what I want is change the font color, no, and it's applying to this stuff down here. Um, Okay, let's let's back out of here. Actually, let's do a Control Z a couple times, and I'm going to go back here. And I'm going to do two things. Uh, first of all, that text was awfully big, so I'm going to shrink it down to something more reasonable, and I'm going to change the color of it to red. Actually, let's do black. And now I'm going to do a Control C, and then I'm going to hit the Delete key here. Just hit the edge and hit the Delete key on the keyboard. And then I'm going to insert a chart. Uh, clustered column chart. Click on OK. And it should pull up some Excel for me. And my categories need to go here. And uh, actually, I think they might have been. No, I want categories on the bottom. Let's try pasting that in. We'll see what we get. Do a Control V here. And. Uh, yeah, even now the text is still too big, but uh, it's better than it was before, and I can actually read it now because it's black on white instead of white on white. Okay, so you go to the corner here, make this a little bigger. Uh, you go to this blue uh, corner tab, and you drag it this way, and then whatever is in the blue box is what's going to be used for our chart. And I thought, let me get rid of this stuff here too. And apparently I can't get rid of that. I thought that uh, when I moved this over here that this little corner moved as well. 
Uh, it didn't, but I don't think that's going to be a problem because if I close this, my chart looks the way I want it to look. Um, so now it says change the text uh, on the vertical axis to millions of dollars. If I click on the plus sign here, this lets me add things. I want an axis title, and the one I want is the vertical axis, and I can just start typing right away, and that's millions of dollars. And uh, then on slide number six, change the major unit on the y axis to one instead of 0.5 like it is now. And let's try right clicking on these numbers over here and do format axis. And here are our axis options over here. And uh, I want the uh, major unit to be one. And notice that changes the maximum to five as well. And I'm done with that. I think now I can close it. Uh, the chart title, we want to change to um, budget. And um, set the chart style to style one. Actually, I didn't mention this either, but uh, you don't want something there that says series one as part of your chart. And uh, we want uh, style one, which actually I think may be the default here. Uh, so there's style number one. And uh, for all slides, apply the transition name Zoom. So let's go to transitions here. And there should be something called Zoom. And there it is. Click on that. And that just applies to this slide now. Uh, don't forget to click on apply to all over here. And it should apply it to everything. If I go back to the top slide here now and preview my slideshow, I should get the Zoom. And if I go to the next slide, and then the next slide and now I have to hit the space bar or the down arrow or click on the mouse every time uh, to bring in a new item and they'll come in with the bounce effect and then go to slide number four and I've got this uh, smart art here and let's go to slide number five and then let's go to slide number six and click one more time and that takes us to the end of the show and that takes us to the end of the instructions for the practice test.